I hope that translation is okay. I'm Eddie Wax. I'm a journalist at Politico. I write about agriculture. I never speak French, so it will be a kind of challenge, but not for our French、uh, minister. Well, we'll see. I have the honor to introduce Mr. Mark Feno, Minister of Agriculture and Food Sovereignty in France, and we have only a quarter of an hour. So,、uh, without,、um, I'm, I'm going to ask you immediately questions because on Monday, on Monday in Brussels, there was a, a meeting, and your Ukrainian counterpart, and we will meet him in a few minutes, was there as well, and he asked the. EU to give to Ukraine the necessary financial resources, the necessary investments to support Ukraine and Ukraine's、um, exports.、So、what is France doing to support Ukraine? Well, first of all, it really is part of what the Ukrainian minister said,、uh, minister that I've met at, at this time, right? This is what we call solidarity lines. So, what we're trying to do here is to get out of.、Um, That、uh, blockade, because we know that most of Ukraine's production、uh, was being exported through the ports. The ports were、uh, under a blockade. We managed to open the ports, but then、uh, we've had some some issues because you know of what、uh, the decisions、uh, the decisions that Putin is taking. And so now we're trying to open new roads, new terrestrial、um, lanes, if I might say. So we have、uh, roads going、uh, towards Romania. This is what we're working on at the moment. And so the idea is to try and help them finance to to help them. Uh, fund all of the materials, whether it's the train or the road logistics,、uh, so we're able to try and make sure that Ukraine can export、uh, their cereals and make sure that the cereals that are being stored in Ukraine can actually get out of the country. This is important for Ukrainians when it comes to resources, and it's important for us as well to try and stabilize the markets. This is for the short term. For the long term, we have to keep on thinking because we're in a very unstable situation at the moment, as you've seen with the, the war in Ukraine. We need to make sure that we stabilize those alternative roads. Um, uh, through the Baltic or through Romania to make sure that we would never ever be、uh, in de- dependent on decisions、um, of a country such as Russia. Well, in short,、uh, I saw that basically the French government signed、uh, an agreement、uh, with Romania. What is the amount? We'd have to look at it. I'm not really sure that I can tell you that because it's more of the Minister of Transport that usually handles that, and we try to see that depending on the needs that we have. Sometimes it's only about mobilizing resources and organization. Is it is it all going well? I'm not sure.、Um, then it's all about. You know, rails and and everything. I can't really give you figures, but the objective here is that we're able to yes, get to that. Yes, but it's going to talk to to take、um, a lot of time、uh, because、uh, we need to find、uh, basically other options,、uh, and it will take、uh, years. Yeah, hopefully,、uh, we're hoping it's going to be only years, not decades. But here, this is only for short term. So we want to make sure that we can,、uh, you know, get what is being stopped in Ukraine at the moment. Uh, making sure that they still have storage capacity as well, because they need, you know, to get rid of the first crop and then get the second、uh, crop in.、Um, so we need to make sure that nothing is being destroyed by the decisions made by Putin. So this is what we want to do for solidarity lines, and then we try to imagine how we could organize that. But we know that for infrastructures, including、um, uh, rail transfer and uh, rail uh, uh, shipment. Issues. I mean, working on that, we know that、uh, you know vacancies are not always compatible. Yesterday there was the meeting of the G20, and you were there、uh, from Paris, but there was no global communique because Russia was blocking basically an agreement、uh, because you wanted to talk about the war in Ukraine. Well, this is contingency, and so this is also part of you know the ups and downs of multilateral、um, relationships, and of course. Russia doesn't want us to sign this agreement, and I'd like to say something on that, because we can see that Putin wants to, you know, help hold people responsible. If we are on a serial market and we're having issues, if we have issues with our third country, and if we have issues around, it's because、uh, Putin decided to make food a weapon, a, a war weapon. It's a geopolitical tool for him. So we need to make sure that we don't stay as innocent as we used to be, 
because food can be a weapon it can be a it can add a lot of pressure on countries and we need to make sure that we work towards agreements or towards solutions i mean he completely stopped having this communication i mean if you're invading a country of course you get yourself outside of an international system right and it's not because we don't have a joint agreement that we don't have a, a joint will as well with the us with canada or other european partners even with turkey actually because we all want to make sure that the cereals get out of, of ukraine i mean this is the interest of the Ukrainians, but also for us and then there is another element which is also very important because an agreement was signed by Turkey, uh, the United Nations and both countries at war in order to reopen a few harbor, a few port uh, alongside the Black Sea, but it has to be renewed by the end of October. And Mr. Putin, um, uh, well, uh, he caused doubt. He says that this uh, initiative basically is not useful, that that cereals are not are only going to rich countries as Germany and France. So while saying that, I think that he tries to find an excuse to put an end to the agreement. What's your opinion on that? I mean, he's looking by all means. I mean, first of all, because he's faced with its own reality and its own truth. And so, you know, to repeat a lie doesn't make it, it doesn't make it true. I mean, I think it has to be said at some point. We all know that it's not Europe um, which needs cereals. We all know that this is rather at the uh, borders, whether it's Mediterranean borders or Africa, it's it's rather there that we have an issue. And I can see what he wants to do. And this is also why we need to keep on working on solidarity lanes. And you probably saw that, but it's, we've opened those solidarity lanes so that we can uh, keep on moving forward. I mean, to, to, to be communicating with someone, you need to be trusting each other. But with Putin, it's really hard because he says sometimes that it, it's okay, sometimes it is not okay. So we really don't know how to handle this. It's really hard for, for us to build some sort of dialogue, uh, for us to, to build a trust. So I can see that he's looking by all means to try and put pressure again, because what he wants in the end is, because I mean, we've, we've put all of these sanctions to make sure that uh, we would stabilize the situation, but we need to free ourselves from all of the restrictions that Russia imposed on the food market. This so is where at. it's a great moment to ask you a question on the on the um, farm initiative supported by France during its presidency of the Council this year. But now France is working with agencies like FIDA, like PAM, like FAO in Rome. And, um, well, uh, some declarations, some statements were made around the solidarity pillar how is this going to work? Uh, uh, French farmers, are they going to grow, uh, for instance, corn? And will it be sent in needy countries in Africa, for instance? Well, the farm initiative, I mean, it's, it's the French initiative, right? But it doesn't mean that it's only for France. So we have uh, three pillars. I'm going to go very quickly because um, it goes really fast here. The idea is for us to have a full transparency and to make sure that flows are more fluid so that there's no tension on the food market, especially in the cereals market. So it's not only France working on that. This is uh, something that we try to work on all together. We know that a lot of countries are under the pressure of Russia at the moment. They're not able to get their needs fulfilled. And so that's why we have those different pillars. And the, the one of the pillars is also to make sure that countries have enough capacity that they're able to get their food sovereignty back. So this is something that France, you know, is, is trying to put forward, but we're not the only one. But what is the added value? Because the three agencies in Rome, well, they were already doing that. It is not something new. So it's not because, because other people were doing it. It was nothing for us. The idea here was to try and reinforce this partnership. And it shows that we really want to integrate uh, private partners as well, because those strategies uh, need to be established with those partners. You know, this is like an additional brick that we can that we can add to make sure that we keep on moving forward. I mean, 
front is, is really seen as being arrogant and doing things by itself. But here we're really trying to put forward a policy and I know that France has a role to play here. Okay, okay, because I uh, wrote an article on Politico. I said if there are too many initiatives, too many countries, uh, too many capitals uh, in the EU, but also all over the world, uh, which try uh, to fight against famine, um, because there is not only famine, of course, uh, but there is also, uh, well, you don't, uh, not, you don't have only farm, you have also a uh, German uh, initiative but can you reassure us, is Berlin and Paris, are they working together? Because I heard that France um, um, would rather basically um, isolate Germany. No, well, I've discussed many times with my German counterpart, especially when it comes to solidarity here and on this specific topic. But I don't feel that, and I mean, France doesn't feel that this is, um, you know, that we are being competing that we are competing on that. I mean, we have institutions and different entities working towards that. I mean, here, the most important part is um, cohesion cooperation. We need to make sure that everyone is aligned, is in line with um, our values, such as uh, food sovereignty and transparency, and then all initiatives can, you know, feed from uh, one another and they can just um, develop like this. Okay, we still have three minutes left. Uh, and now um, I'm going to talk about Brussels. In Brussels, there is a huge debate on the target uh, aiming at reducing pesticides, um, um, less pesticides before the end of the decade. And we know that uh, France said that it would uh, ban glyphosate under the last government and didn't do it. And also knowing that France had a plan called uh, eco fito aiming at uh, halving pesticides uh, but uh, it was unsuccessful is it really feasible now to do the same at european level in in a few years time well because we don't have much time just to give you a few elements it's really hard to give some uh, context especially when it comes to uh, this uh, ban on pesticides so when it comes to cmr1 and cmr2 which are the most at risk uh, products here we are trying to target minus 93% in five years. And for CMR1, CMR2, that would be minus 35% for France. Yeah, but you said it didn't succeed here. For glyphosate, for example, a third of farms actually don't use it anymore. And we're still going towards reducing the use of that um, pesticide. And we can't find a solution if it's not at the European level, because otherwise you have unfair competition uh, all over Europe. And it's something that farmers would not understand. This is something that people would not understand. And so it's really important for people actually working in the agricultural uh, sector, because if someone has to find alternatives and the other one doesn't, it's not fair. But, you know, the most important part is that we do need to reduce that. I mean, we cannot stay in this situation. We cannot just uh, keep going the way we do. So we need to reduce that, but we need to reduce that at the European level, because this is also how we'll be able to keep on for we have almost uh, 10 countries and European countries that they don't want to, to have maybe this initiative. Maybe they don't want, maybe, maybe some countries don't want this initiative. Um, probably you've heard that on Monday. But saying that everything's fine and that we should stay with the status quo, I think it's for, it, w it would mean for us to make, that we would ma be making a mistake. And I think we've said that already. We need to go towards reducing the use of pesticides. And at, at the same time, people do not want to commit. So I know that people have uh, legitimate Years. So we need to find a European solution. I mean, we cannot just ban everything and then see how things will go later on. So we need to work on that with companies that work in, the, in that sector. So we need to do research because we cannot just put farmers in, in such a hard position. And then we have some sensitive uh, areas as well. And if for those sensitive areas, uh, we have no pesticides and no solutions, we will go towards other issues. So it needs that it means that we need to make sure that we find a solution that is resilience, that we don't depend on those products for too much. 
I think that I have, uh, we have the time for a very last question. When you became minister, you introduced a major change under the French presidency because Julien de Normandie highlighted the importance of production, uh, producing more, more cereals, uh, more wheat because of the situation in Ukraine. Uh, but um, you think it's maybe less important. Um, you are different from your predecessor well i think it's 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 a bit of a caricature to be honest we do need food sovereignty i told you that food can be um turned in 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 a into a weapon um so we need to stop being naive here and this is i'm, I'm also in line with what uh, julian was doing but the idea here is sovereignty is not all about producing it's about being able to uh, it's about it's about being able for farmers to live off of it. It's uh, about being able to uh, fight against climate change. We need to make sure that we're able to let agriculture uh, develop as well. So sovereignty is so much more than production. And if we want food sovereignty, we need to make sure that our model is changing, that our model is going to evolve because we need to face uh, climate change at the moment. We need to make sure that we have soils that are actually able to produce and we can see that soils quality is degrading uh, we need those soils to be able to sequester uh, co2 for example so i'm not saying that i'm going against what my predecessor was doing usually we're saying that i mean we need to work on sovereignty we cannot leave sovereignty on one side and just deal with the other part and some other people just work only on sovereignty and you know they don't take into consideration the other things so i'm going to try to be a, a a bit less of a caricature here, but it's that we are going to have to work on those two pillars. If ecosystems are degraded, we can say whatever we want when it comes to production, we'll never make it. We've got an ecosystemic solution, a question here. So soil's quality is extremely important. It has an impact on the uh, plant's quality, maybe on some diseases as well. So the system cannot be static. And this is the only, um, and this is the uh, last point sorry, that I want to go for it. I think we need to rework on farm to fork because I don't know how we can explain that in a, in a world in which we have a food crisis, economic crisis and climate crisis, I mean, we can't think that the only solution is for us to just reduce production. I mean, this is an objective that was already set before the war in Ukraine, maybe the end of our innocence could you know, lead us to think about that again. But the first real challenge from farm to fork, it is to reduce pesticides. Yes. Well, yes and no. The quantitative objective is send it weird to me when it comes to reducing production. Either agriculture is a weapon or reduction is a weapon here. So we need to, to work on reducing the use of pesticides, right? We agree on that. We have a new um, techniques and new technologies that can be that can be used. But you know, having these characters saying that we need to reduce a pesticides production, and here we get first warranty. I think this would be a mistake. So the European Commission should um, review the farm to fork policy. I think that we need to discuss about the farm to fork initiative, and we need to maybe rethink it in a world in which we say that food can be a weapon. You know, knowing that we need to prepare for potential conflict. I mean, it would be weird to, to be saying that we have to prepare for conflict. Uh, I'm not going to say if I agree or do not agree. Budget for the army, for example. You know, it's, it's a thought biodiversity. Oh, we will see if you can change the model of agriculture. Thank you very much for being Thank with you. us. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. You're welcome.